Hello and welcome to English Literature with Susan. Today I'm going to talk about the poem, the short poem Helen, written by Hilda de Little, famous as HD. Uh, Hilda de Little is a leading figure in images movement of poetry at the beginning of 20th century. Her poetry is focused, terse, condensed uh, about a singular image or object most of the times. And her, her poems are mostly short ones. Uh, in this poem, Helen uh, HD represents a different image of Helen of Troy. While Helen of Troy, uh, in different forms of art, such as painting and poetry, is famous and uh, beloved for her beauty, or she is praised all the time. In this poem, um, Hilda de Little tries to see Helen as a part, as part of the culture and history of Greece, and how her presence had affected uh, the lives of the people who are not anyway the daughters of God. Um, we can compare this poem with Helen by Edgar Allan Poe, uh, in which we see a male uh, version uh, of the praise of the bodily figures and the beauties of the woman, Helen. Or we can compare this poem uh, concerning its point of view or the critique the poem represents with um, W. B. Yeats's poem, Lida and the Swan. If you're interested to compare the two poems or listen to that poem's analysis, you can uh, check out my video on, on the poem, Lida and the Swan by William Butler Yeats. So now let us go to the text of the poem. And she starts with, with a note of hatred. All Greece hates the still eyes and the white face. The, the eyes and the face, the beauty um, of the face of Helen is, is most of the times praised, but now she's, she's um, bringing a note of hatred toward them. All Greece hates the still eyes and the white face, the luster as of olives where she stands and the white hands. Uh, the, the, um, all the things uh, related to, to the colors of her body or, or her appearances um, disregarded or um, are kind of uh, represented as, as something to be hated by the poet here. Um, Luster, if you ask, means a gentle sheen or a soft glow. But by the way, um, she, she um, Hilda de Little doesn't believe that these things, the, the color of the olive or the shining of an olive or a white face would bring about a beauty because her character was something else. All Greece reviles, hates the worn face, the, the pale face when she smiles, hating it deeper still when it grows worn and white, remembering past enchantments and past ills. Why the Greek people, why Greece would hate Helen uh, because of what she has done in the previous times, because uh, we, we read here and there um, in different records, uh, literary records, that Helen uh, was willing to, to escape with Paris. So it was not a totally an abduction, we can say. It was more than that. It was an adventure for Helen. And here the poet accepts that Helen has done all the things on purpose and that, that she selfishly has chosen Paris. And then she had brought about a war uh, and, and many, many people who are dead and, and 10 years of besieging of Troy and everything. So the past is all, rep um, all refers to uh, what was uh, what was happening uh, in the in the Iliad, for example, we can say as, as a as a literary cultural heritage of the people of Greece. Um, if we want to compare this poem with Lido and the Swan by WBH, we see that in Lido and the Swan, WBH blames the god Zeus uh, for interfering in the affairs of mankind. But here we see um, the responsibility is put upon the shoulders of Helen herself. So um, it seems that Hilda de Little doesn't think that it's just the god and then uh, we are the victims. It seems that Helen um, is also victimizing the people as a partly human being and partly uh, a godly figure. And Greece sees unmoved God's daughter, and we have the reference to Zeus's um, uh, Zeus's 
uh, intercourse with Lida, Helen's mother, uh, born of love, the beauty of cool feet and slenderest knees. Could love indeed the maid, the Greece, Greece is the subject here, could love indeed uh, the maid only if she were laid white ash amid funeral cypresses. That the Greek, uh, Greek people of Greece would love Helen only and if she is dead, and not, not in any other ways. That the cypresses are, are trees from which um, the, the fun funerals were uh, were conducted, with which um, either um, the, 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 out of them uh, some boxes were made, for example, or the, the uh, burned cypresses and then uh, cremated a body over it. So, so it seems that. Uh, the, the dead figure is what is praised, not the living, lively Helen. And it seems that the painter of this painting also didn't have a positive attitude towards the figure of Helen. So this was my explanation of this poem, and I hope you have enjoyed it. See you in my next videos.